Hey guys, this is Matt with bleepandjeep.com. Today I'd like to show you how to troubleshoot and diagnose your engine overheating issues. But first, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel right here and check out my website, bleepandjeep.com, for all the best off-road videos on YouTube. Alright, so uh, what you'll need to know is that there's many uh, components to your cooling system and they all have to be working together um, to cool your engine. Sometimes you can have one issue that will completely shut down an overheat engine. Sometimes one thing will go bad and you can keep limping along and uh, then you'll have a second thing go bad and it will completely destroy it. So you could be looking for one, two or, or more components that are bad altogether. The first thing you'll need to know is how the engine and cooling system work. So let me show you. Alright, so here's a little diagram of your engine and your cooling system. It all starts right here at the water pump. The water pump spins and it pushes the coolant through the engine and it all stops right here at the thermostat. The thermostat stays closed until the water warms up and then it opens up, lets it go through the upper radiator hose into the radiator. It goes all through the radiator, cools off. It's cooled off by your fans. You can have a clutch fan, an electric fan, or two electric fans. And then it goes through your lower radiator hose back to your water pump. As the liquid is heated, it expands. Some of that goes into your coolant recovery system or your reservoir. And you also have um, a heater core over here which you can let uh, water in to heat the inside of your cab. So that's basically it in a nutshell. These are all the components, not including your, uh, your fan, your clutch fan, your electric fan, which are back here. And this diagram doesn't really show but uh, if there's anything wrong it's going to be one of these components so it's not really that complicated you just have to diagnose the issue okay so the second thing you'll want to know is whether or not you have an open or closed system um, some of the earlier model Cherokees had what's called a closed system you'll be able to tell the difference if you don't have a radiator cap um, you've got a closed system you'll have a cap over here on top of the bottle um, if you've got the closed system, I recommend upgrading to the open system. Just do a search on the internet for uh, converting to the open system. And it's pretty simple. It's not that complicated. But uh, everything else pretty much similar. There's a little different issues with the closed system, but you'll still be able to, to diagnose the problem. So the first thing you'll want to do is check um, the easiest components first. Check the simplest things. I'll go ahead and show you those now. So the first thing you'll want to check is to make sure that your radiator is not blocked or full of debris. If it is, go ahead and take those things out. If it's got mud in it, hose it down, wash the mud out. Step two, you'll want to open your radiator cap. Make sure the fluid in here is nice and clean. And while you're here, check your cap. Make sure it's still got some spring to it and that the rubber is still there and everything looks good. Also, open up your reservoir and check to make sure that's clean as well. Oh, if it looks anything like this, go ahead and flush the system. Also, make sure you're running a 50-50 mix of antifreeze and distilled water. If you've got too much antifreeze, you won't cool. If you've got too much water, you're going to rust. Okay, step three is pretty simple. All you got to do is look for leaks. If you find one, go ahead and replace that component. Don't just put stop leak in there. Go ahead and fix the problem. All right, we're on to step four. If you've recently had to replace the coolant in your car, or if you've had to add fluid, uh, then you might have an air bubble in the system and you'll need to go ahead and burp it. Let me show you how to do it. So you want to park it on a hill, but make sure it's not too steep or not too shallow. You'll want it just about there. Okay, so to burp an open system, you're gonna park your vehicle uphill. You're gonna make sure it's cold. I can't stress this enough. Do not open this cap when it's hot. Make sure it's cold, go ahead and open it up, and you're going to fill your radiator with 50-50 antifreeze and distilled water. Once that's full, go ahead and start your car. Let it get hot. When it gets hot, your thermostat in here is going to open up. It's going to suck the fluid down through the radiator and into the engine. When it does that, go ahead and fill it back up. Do this over and over, and make sure this is full. You can help it along by pinching your upper radiator hose on and off, and that'll 
dispel some of the bubbles. It'll help the fluid through and help the overall situation. If you do happen to have a closed system and you're not going to change it, there's a little bit different process. You're going to park downhill and there's a little sensor doodad back here at the back of the engine. You're going to take that off and that will dispel some of the air and burp system for you. Okay, step five is you're going to check your lower radiator hose. This hose comes from the water pump to the bottom of the radiator. It has a spring in it. Sometimes when people change this hose they forget to put the spring back in. So just feel it and I can feel that that spring is in there. You can also start the car and rev it up and see if this hose is collapsing. If it does then you don't have a spring and you've got a problem. Okay, step number six is to check your electric fan. Go ahead and turn the car on, turn the air condition on. If the fan comes on, you know the fan is working, but you're not done. Go ahead and let the car get hot. When the car gets hot, the fan should also come on with the AC off. If it doesn't, you'll need to replace the electric fan relay. Also, make sure that your fan doesn't have a wobble. Um, make sure that your wires aren't crossed because if you do get your wires crossed it could be pushing instead of pulling the air through and make sure that it doesn't have excessive noise make sure that it's not shorted out if it's shorted out um, it could still be working but uh, not working to its prime and causing problems with your alternator and your batteries okay step number six is to check your thermostat your thermostat is in here in this housing, but there are several ways to check it. Uh, when the engine is hot, you can feel this hose, the upper radiator hose, and it should be consistently hot all the way across going into the radiator when the engine is hot and the thermostat is open, letting the fluid flow through. If it's stuck shut, then uh, you won't have hot water coming all the way through this thing. You can also check it when the engine is cold over here. To check your thermostat when the engine is cool, go ahead and open your radiator cap. Start the car and let it warm up. If the thermostat is working properly, there should be a noticeable drop in the fluid level right here when it opens to let the water through. You can also check your thermostat by taking it out of here and putting it in boiling water. Since the thermostat opens at about 195 degrees when the water boils, you should see the thermostat fully open. Um, if you're going to do this though, I'd recommend just putting in a new one because they're only about five or ten bucks for a new thermostat and you're going to have it open anyway. Why not go ahead and replace it? One other point to note is make sure that you use the recommended thermostat. A lot of people say put in a 180. That's not going to help, trust me. Go ahead and put the 195 or whatever the book recommends. Alright, step number eight. We're almost there. Step number eight is to check your water pump. Your water pump is right down here. Do this while the engine is running. Check to see if the pulley is wobbling. If it is, the bearings might be going out. Listen to it. Make sure it's not making an awful noise. And you can also check your fluid here. If your fluid has little metal shavings in it, like you're mining for silver, um, then your water pump is probably bad. Sometimes what will happen is the little blades on the water pump will get cocked at an angle and they'll start shaving off the aluminum and it'll all start coming up in here. You can also go ahead and um, rev the engine. When you rev the engine real hard this water should suck down. That'll tell you your water pump is working well. But make sure you don't take this off when the engine is hot. Can't stress that enough. Okay, you've made it to step nine. Step nine is to go ahead and check your manual clutch fan. What this is is a fan that has a clutch on it, a thermostatic clutch that uh, changes the speed depending on the temperature. You should be able to rotate this by hand when the engine is off. Also what you want to do is have somebody start the car, watch the fan, and then have them cut, cut the car off. If the fan spins for more than two seconds after the car is off, then you need to go ahead and replace it. Um, it's very, very hard to diagnose one of these, almost impossible. So you might just want to go ahead and replace it just because. Also make sure that you have a fan shroud on. It's very necessary. Okay, you've completed all nine steps. If you haven't solved your problem, I think you've missed something. Go back and check it out. If you think I've missed something, please leave it in the comments below. 
Keep in mind that if you have an automatic transmission like I do, then your transmission fluid also runs through your radiator, so don't confuse a hot transmission with the overheating cooling system. And if you're having problems only when you come to traffic and you're staying cool on the highway, then you probably have an airflow problem. Check your manual clutch fan and your fan and your shroud and that kind of thing. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, Bleep and Jeep. If you have any questions or comments, leave those below. And check out my website, bleepandjeep.com, for all the best off-road videos on YouTube. Thanks so much.